Time is arguably the most valuable thing that we have as human beings. And many of us are in the mindset that we need to trade the vast majority of it for a paycheck. A paycheck that buys things like housing, groceries, fuel, transportation, all the everyday items, but also things like travel and little luxuries. At some point, you've probably asked yourself, is this all there is? Is this the meaning of life? Is this what I'm meant to be doing? To be sitting behind a desk all day, to be trading all of my time doing a job that I don't really like so that I can just buy the things that other people expect me to have. I'm pretty sure that there is a very well-known quote from Fight Club that you can probably hear in your head right now. Would you be doing the job that you do right now if money were not involved? Probably not. But how do you navigate finding meaning in a world that is obsessed with consuming things we don't need and spending time we really don't have to get those things? Money might be a lead villain in a lot of our lives here on this planet Earth, but we have to be honest with ourselves. It is something we need. It is something we have to have in order to get the things like basic necessities. We live in a capitalist society. That is just how it is. So how exactly do you get money to work for you instead of you working for it? That's the question we're going to try to break down in today's video. Let's talk about the ultimate goal of financial freedom and how to achieve it in 2024. I am currently coast fired. That means I have enough saved in investments to retire at age 65, traditional retirement age in Canada. These are gonna be some of my best tips in order for you to achieve the same thing. Now, this isn't a guide on how to get rich. It's not a overnight success story type of thing. It's an overview of the actionable steps that you can take today, no matter what situation you're in financially, no matter how much money you make. Now, step one is to budget. And I know this is tried and true. This has been mentioned a million times. It's boring, it's tedious, no one wants to do it, but you have to do this. You have to do this step. You're not gonna know where you're starting if you don't do this. You have to know where your money is going. You have to know how much money you're bringing in in order for you to improve your situation. So create a spreadsheet on something like Google Docs or Excel, download an app like Mint, or do the old school paper and pen method. I personally use two out of three of these options and I obsessively budget now, which is not healthy. I don't recommend doing it to an extreme, but you need to get a pen down on paper figuratively and track everything that's coming in and everything that's going out. If you're new to this, you know, find your pay stubs. That will help you understand how much money you make. Find your credit card or bank statements or go online on your apps and scroll through. You'll see all the transactions. And yes, it's tedious. I know it's a lot of work. Go through it and plug every single expense into whatever you're using, if it's a spreadsheet or an app. Some apps will automatically bring those expenses in for you. It's definitely not glamorous by any means. And personally, I avoided doing this for far too long. I just really didn't think that I needed to budget. When I eventually started doing it, I was kind of shocked at how much I was spending on things that were bringing absolutely like no value to my life. So if you wanna get better with money, you got to do it. Step two is to trim. So once you've got a budget established, you know what's coming in, you know what's going out, you can start to pick apart the different categories and start to get rid of the things that you really don't need or even necessarily want. I really don't believe in trimming down to the absolute bare minimum here. I think you need to have certain things like if it's a coffee every morning or avocado toast or whatever the heck it is, if it's a marginal amount of money, especially compared to how much money you're bringing in, then keep those little luxuries around. If that's something that actually adds value to your life, if it helps you get out of bed in the morning to go to work, going and getting that coffee, not buying a coffee every day is not gonna make you a millionaire. If you do end up cutting down to the bare essentials, you're gonna find yourself in a state of deprivation, which is really risky because you might get to a point where you're just fed up with it and you wanna give up in it completely and spend all the money that you've saved because YOLO, let me just treat myself, okay? That's what we're trying to avoid here. We wanna make a plan for you that's actually sustainable, things that are going to change your mindset on how you see money, more so than trimming every single expense that isn't a bare necessity. If you find that you've trimmed all you can out of your budget and you're still not making ends meet, 
You have to get to work. If this is the state that you're in, if you're in survival mode, nothing else matters than just paying your bills. So you have to level up your skills. You have to switch to a different company, get a second job. I did this personally for over four years. Number three, to level up. Find ways to make extra income, whether that's through some kind of side hustle. I absolutely hate that word. I don't want to say that. Maybe you dream of owning your own business one day. Maybe you could do certain things to start that process on the side. Maybe you go back to school, start saving up to level up your skill set, taking a promotion in a different department, going to a different company. There are a ton of different things you can do. It's not that it's not accessible to you. It's that you need to focus on leveling up before you can and move on to the further steps. I suggest you actually physically write it out, make a plan, figure out the things that you actually want in life, and then try to break down what steps you would need to take in order to get there. Step number four is to save and invest. So if you're not already doing it, please get your company's full RRSP match or whatever retirement fund in your country, if it's the US, your 401k, if your employer offers any kind of retirement matching program, do everything you can to get that full match. It's forced savings. It's going to come right off your paycheck. You're not even going to notice it. If you have like a fund manager or something, you can go and sit down with them and look at your options. We're going to talk about investing in a little bit here, but make sure at the very minimum, you're getting that full match. That is essentially free money from your employer. And this is really going to save you down the road if you're not a natural saver. Next, I would open up a TFSA if you don't already have it, a tax-free savings account. If you're in another country, maybe you have something equivalent, but a tax-free savings account in Canada is essentially an account that you open up. It's an investment account. I know it's called a savings account, but it's technically an investment account so that anything that you make in terms of investment income in that account is tax-free. That is massive. And yes, there is a cap on it. You can only put in so much money because obviously there's such an incentive to use that account. You can open up one of these accounts directly through your bank if you want to. You can also go somewhere like Wealth Simple or some of these other banks and open up just an investment account. I think if you're just starting out, it's much easier to just go with whatever bank you're already with. I still currently use the TD Direct Investing. I've been with TD since I was like 12 years old. I, it works for me. Everything is in one place. I can see it in one account. I know it's probably not the best platform, but it works for me and I'm totally happy with it. So there's no shame in going with the bank you're already with. If you're more seasoned and you like to invest a lot and do day trading and things like that, whatever, if you're more experienced down the road, you can look into moving that money to a different account with lower fees. Start investing right away, whether it's $100, $1,000, $10,000, whatever it is. As soon as you have a little bit of money in that TFSA, I always recommend index funds and ETFs if you're in it for the long haul. If you're looking at socking money away for retirement like 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road, these are just my personal favorite. Do your own research. You know, I have made investment mistakes in the past. I have invested in single stocks that absolutely tanked and I lost quite a bit of money. And that was a lesson learned. So learn from my mistakes. Go with something that's a little more secure. You can look into things like bonds if you're really risk averse, things like real estate. I do have almost half of my net worth in the property that I own, but that's not going to work for everybody. At the bare minimum, I would just say to stick with index funds and ETFs because they are set and forget. Easy peasy, if you're interested, the one that I personally invest in is VEQT, which is the Vanguard All Equity Fund. And it's easy because I don't have to rebalance every year, which if you're new to investing, don't even worry about that. I don't want to confuse anyone or turn in anyone off from investing because it is really, really easy. I recommend setting a savings goal for yourself annually. If you're starting out, once you've formulated that budget, you should be able to see how much money you can save every month. It's a lot easier to achieve a goal when you actually have it written out and you have a certain number in your mind. You can save up an emergency fund if you want to. I know a lot of people recommend this, like three to six months of emergency savings in like just a high yield savings account. I personally don't do this. Um, there's not really any expenses that come up for me that I won't be able to pay off like in a couple days. I mean, nothing is without risk. No investment is without risk. So you need to make that decision for yourself. If you are more risk averse and you don't have any savings to begin with, it might be a good step for you if you can only save like a hundred bucks, maybe a couple hundred bucks every month. Saving up the first like thousand as an emergency fund could be a really good option. 
but it was really dependent on the person. For me, credit cards are a great option because I pay them off in full by the due date every single time. I've been doing that for 10 plus years. The important thing here is to start saving, set those goals, and get investing as early as you can because compound interest is your absolute best friend when it comes to financial freedom. The sooner you get started, the better because your money will just sit there and work for you. And that's the ultimate goal. Step number five is to stay the course. Keep saving, keep investing, keep your expenses as low as you're comfortable with, and just keep going. Try your best to avoid lifestyle inflation and trying to keep up with your friends and family who are spending a bunch of money on whatever. Make sure that you're staying true to your goals. If financial freedom is truly what you want, then buying you know, the next iPhone or the next gadget every single year, trading in your car, buying a new house whenever you wanna upgrade or whatever, a starter house, like what is that? Um, try to avoid that stuff if that's not what you want because financial freedom is not about material things. It's about you buying your time back. It's really important to have hobbies that do not generate income. So yes, a lot of your hobbies on the side can become side hustles and you can make money from a lot of different things, but it is really important to have hobbies that specifically don't make income because then you'll have some kind of creative outlet. Maybe it's like running or cycling, maybe it's painting or drawing, making clothing, whatever it is. Once you retire, you gotta have stuff that is gonna keep you busy and keep your brain going. Invest in relationships. So try to find like-minded people. I know it can be difficult in this day and age to find people who don't wanna go out, party all night, drink through their paycheck and do all these luxury things and buy all these luxury items, but do your best. There are people out there. I mean, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Find people who enjoy spending a night in, who want to go out for a coffee date and a walk, doing things that are a little more frugal, but really fun. You don't have to put a ton of money into your social life. If people actually want to be around you and want to spend time with you, they don't care what you're doing. They just want to be in your presence and be talking to you. That's why I love going over to people's houses or having people over because we get to just sit and enjoy each other's company. And those are honestly the best relationships that I've had in my life. People who really don't care about what I'm spending money on or how expensive the dinner was. Treat yourself when you reach milestones. If you have a goal of say $500,000 by the time you're 40, every time you hit 10,000, maybe you treat yourself to something small. If you're on the lower scale and maybe you're just reaching your first thousand dollars, get yourself a nice little specialty coffee or a donut or some kind of small treat because you're probably going to be on this journey mostly on your own. Unless you have maybe a partner who's really on the path with you, you're gonna be celebrating a lot of your milestones behind closed doors. You really don't need to boast about these achievements financially because you'll find some people might try to take advantage of you if you do talk about how much money you have. And it's really nice if you can treat yourself to something small just as a celebratory thing for you reaching that goal. As your savings and investments grow, you might start to notice a big shift in the way that you see money. Money will go from being a finite resource to something that is actually a tool that you can use to set yourself up for a more stable and better future. Once you start investing and seeing those returns, you'll see that your money is actually the one who's working for you instead of you working to get it. And you can pretty much watch that grow and grow and grow until those returns are so much that they cover all of your monthly expenses. And at that point, you're financially free. That's the goal to have enough money in investments so that that money is making enough that you can live on. And it's not as hard to achieve as some people might think. You don't need millions of dollars in the bank. You don't need to be some kind of investment wizard. You don't need to have like a huge inheritance or you, you can do this on your own. Like at any point in your life, you can start to take the steps to set yourself up for this kind of future. You also don't have to wait until you have that much money to make a change in your lifestyle. If you want to pursue something like Coast Fire where you only have to work enough to cover your expenses, but I think you'll be really surprised as you go along this journey, how many doors actually open up if you allow yourself to go after the things you actually want and using money as a tool to get there instead of looking at it as this thing to be used until it's gone. If the nine to five work life is not for you, break the mold, do something different. 
Do it the smart way so that you're still setting yourself up for a stable financial future. And the last points that I wanted to make on this is don't lose sight of the why. Don't lose sight of why you're actually pursuing this kind of lifestyle, why you want financial independence to begin with, why maybe you want to pursue an alternative life. Don't become obsessed with an arbitrary number. This I'm definitely guilty of when I first started on this journey. I had a number in my mind by a certain age. I got to a state where I was really unhappy. So forget about the arbitrary number, have a number in mind, but be loose with it. Allow yourself to change your mind as you go down this path. Life is gonna throw you different curveballs. You're gonna have to adjust your plan. You're gonna have to make changes depending on what you want in that moment within reason. Anyone can do this. Anyone can implement these steps, no matter where you are in life in this moment right now, you can always do something to improve your situation. I believe in you. I really think that you can do this. If this is something you truly want, it's a little easier to get than a lot of people think. You just have to be diligent and you have to do a lot of reading and research to educate yourself. Finance is really not taught in schools anywhere in the world that I know of. I mean, if you're from a country that actually teaches things like investing, money management, the day-to-day -day in like high school, like let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious. It was definitely not taught to me growing up. I used to spend my entire paycheck. I hope this guide and these tips have helped you with your journey and maybe have taught you a little something. If you wanted to add anything at all to this video, please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to get the discussion going on achieving things like financial independence. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.